One of the things that we do on a regular basis every Sunday after our worship service is we welcome each other and we say something to one another. We tell them by the time we want to welcome the people, we remind ourselves that, and you know, we say this to ourselves, we remind ourselves, we say our mission as a church is to equip the body of Christ to increase in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and in favor with man. Okay? In other words, every Sunday, before we go deep into our service, before we begin to go into all the various activities that we do, we remind ourselves of the mission of the church. Okay? We remind ourselves of the mission of the church. We remind ourselves of the reason for our gathering. That so that we can understand that we are not gathering here because of one particular individual. We're not gathering here because we don't have anything better to do on a Sunday morning. We remind ourselves that we are gathering here because we want to see a particular desired result. And that result is what we tell ourselves within that particular uh, mission statement that we say to equip each other, to equip the body of Christ, which is you and I. And the reason what we are equipping ourselves for is to increase in wisdom, is to increase in stature. Is to increase in favor with God and to increase with favor with man. We say all this and the question is why do we have to do it? Why is it necessary for us to remind ourselves why we gather? Why is it necessary for us to continue to tell ourselves about the, about the mission of why we are here and the desired result of what we are expecting? Why do we have to do it every time? Why is it important to remind ourselves? It is important because we need to remind ourselves so that we can stay focused. There are many places where people gather together and they call it a church, but you find out that the main purpose of the word of God is not, is, is defeated. The reason why people gather together is not very clear. People come to church just not to, not to be equipped, not to be able to encounter the power of the Almighty God, but for some other reason. And that is why we, every time when we come together, before we do any other thing, we let ourselves know we are here so that we can equip one another, so that we can stay focused. Number two, we do this, we remind ourselves every day because we want to put our priority in order. Because one thing you must understand is this. People can gather and call upon the name of the Almighty God and say that they are a church. But as long as the presence of the Almighty God is not central, as long as the Almighty God is not the main focus, is not the main reason why they are there, it is just a country club with the name of a church on it. And that is not what our desire is. Our desire is not to be able to make people rich. Though if they become rich, it is good. Our desire is not to be able to make them to, to become more popular or whatever. The idea is that we want to increase them so that they can have favor with the Almighty God. So that they can increase in the things of God. So that they can begin to have a stature in spiritual things. So that we do all this, we remind ourselves to be able to put our order, to put our priorities in order. So that we do not do things out of order. We do not put the cart before the horse. It is good for us to be able to have movie nights. It is good for us to be able to give out stuff to the community. But at the end of the day, what is the purpose of it? The purpose of it is what? To be able to grow the body of Christ. To be able to introduce them to the word of God. To be able to have them be a candidate of heaven. So that we put our order, we put, we, 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 we put our, uh, we order our priority. That's why we repeat our mission statement on a regular basis. And most importantly, we tell her, we remind ourselves of our mission so as to structure our operation. Structure our operation. Which means that whatever we do, whatever we operate, how we operate, we want to make sure that it's aligned with that particular mission. That's why we remind ourselves. Okay? You see, my brothers and sisters, everything we do here and Lifelong Anointing Church revolves around that particular statement that I just told you. To increase in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God, and in favor with man. Everything that we do, everything that we do here has the goal, has that goal in mind. Everything that, every statement that we make, every message that we preach has that particular mission statement as the center. Okay? Which means that when we plan our program, it is done with that goal in mind. Every program that we plan, the intention is to be able to make people increase in wisdom. To make them increase in stature. To make them increase in the way, in favor with God and in favor with man. Every, every teaching series that we develop, they, it has one of that, it, ha, it has one of that element as the goal. So that at the end of the day, our desire is that as members of Lifelong Anointing Church, we will be able to increase in the wisdom of the Almighty God. 
We'll be able to increase in stature with men. We'll be able to increase in favor with men. We'll be able to increase in our stature spiritually. That is why we do what we do. That's why we design our messages to teach the wisdom of God. That's why we design our sermons to enhance social skills. In the past month, we have talked about why men fail. In most churches, you don't hear those kind of things. The reason is because we want you to understand that men fail not because of the devil only. Men fail sometimes when there's a problem inside. And that's why we design our message to enhance social skills so that you know how to interact and relate with people. We design our messages so that we can deepen our walk with the Almighty God. That is why this morning as we start a new series, this month of March, we are going to be focusing on how to deepen our relationship with the Almighty God. How to grow in favor with the Almighty God. That is going to be the main, that's going to be our main focus. And the Bible tells us one thing in the book of Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, the Bible says that the people who know their God, the people who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall carry out great exploits. If you read the verse in reverse, it means that the people who do not know their God, the people who have no clue who their God is, they are going to be weak and they will be exploited. That's what it simply means. If you don't know who the God you are serving, you have no clue what he can do. You have no clue what the relationship you have with him, what he has given unto you, the power he has deposited in you. If you have no clue what God has made available unto you, you are going to be weak in your life. You are going to be weak in the things you do. And you will find out that the devil will continue to exploit you. That's why Daniel said those who know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploit. In other words, when you know the God you are serving, when you understand his character, when you understand his personality, the Bible says that you are not only going to be strong, but you are going to do excellent things. Why? Because the Bible tells us. He said he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And he has positioned us so that we are seated together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. In other words, that the Lord God Almighty has made so many things available to his people. But the only problem is that his people have no understanding of what is happening to them. And that is why I firmly believe that one sure way we can become strong, one sure way that we can do exploit, one sure way of deepening our relationship with the Almighty God is to know the basis of your faith and the foundation of your faith. Know what your faith is based on. Know what the foundation of your faith is. Know the things that you believe. Know why you believe what you believe. And you will find out that it will be very, very difficult for some Yahoo to come from somewhere and overthrow your faith. It will be very, very difficult for somebody to tell you some cock and bull story and then you say you are no longer a Christian. It is very. It will be very difficult for somebody for, to cause you to stop following the Almighty God. When you know what you believe, it turns things around. And that is why this month, like I said earlier on, we are going to be focusing on the foundations of our faith. The foundations of our faith. The question is, when we talk about the foundation of our faith, what are we talking about? What do we mean when we talk about the foundation of our faith? When we talk about the, uh, revisiting the foundation of our faith, we are talking about, number one, looking at what we believe. What do we believe? How do we, what do we understand? What do we know about the faith that we claim to be? We call ourselves Christian. As a Christian, what do you believe? As a Christian, what does it mean to even be a Christian? That is one of the things that it means when we're talking about revisiting our foundation. Number two, when we say revisiting our foundation, we want to know why do we even believe what we believe? Why do you believe it? Is it because I told you? Is it because your father told you? Is it because your mother told you? Or is it because your wife is nagging the daylight out of you? That's why you are here. Or is it because you want to please your particular husband? Or you want to do something for somebody? Why do you believe what you believe? Why are you holding on to the faith that you are holding on to? That is one of the means, that's what we mean when we're talking about revisiting the foundation of our faith. Number three, when we say revisiting the foundation of our faith, we're talking about what do you believe about what you believe? That's not a play on words. But I want you to understand that you need to understand what you believe about what you believe. Here's my sister sitting here. What do I believe about her? Okay, what do I believe about her personality? What do I believe about her character? What do I believe about grandma's attitude? What do I believe about grandma's behavior? What do I believe about her? That's what I'm saying. When you say you believe God, what do you believe about God? 
If somebody tells me that grandma said X, Y, and Z, if I know that it is contrary to her character, I will not believe it because I know that is not the grandma that I know. The same thing when you are talking about God. When somebody tells you God does not care, God does not care about me, you say that is not true because that is not the character of God that I know. So the question is, what do you believe about what you believe? What do you believe about the God that you believe? Do you believe he's a mean old man who sits down there with a whip in his hand and is ready to whack your face anytime you make a mistake? Or do you think he's a Santa Claus that sits down there and says, oh, 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 boys will always be boys. Which one? What do you believe about what you believe? That is the question. Those are some of the things that we're looking at. And the question is, and the question is, why are we doing this? Why are we looking at things like this? Why are we asking this kind of question? Why are we revisiting the foundation of our faith? We are revisiting the foundation of our faith, number one, because when you know what you believe, it determines how you walk with the Almighty God. When you know the God that you serve, it determines how you walk with Him. If you know God likes certain things, it is very easy for you to walk with Him because that's what you are going to do. If you know he doesn't like certain things, you stay away from that thing and it determines how you walk with So we are doing this particular study because it determines how you walk with God when you know the foundations of your faith. Number two, we are doing this because you number know, when you, you know, knowing what you believe determines how you walk with God. Not only that, it determines how you perceive the Almighty God. When you know the God that you believe. When you know how to walk with him, it determines how you perceive him. It determines your attitude towards life. It determines how you feel about life. It determines your behavior in life. In other words, if you don't know what you believe, you are going to drift about in life. If you don't know what you believe, you are going to drift. It's just like a, 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 a ship that is, doesn't know where it's going. That ship will just keep wandering the surface of the sea. And the same thing, you know, I've given this example several times. If you don't know where you are going, you will keep driving around aimlessly. And there are so many people who do that in the church. Because they don't know the God they are serving. They go about, they drift about in life. The same thing you look at a student in the university. A student who doesn't know the course that they want to study. What happened? They will spend 10 years in college and they will not graduate with any degree. Because you don't know what you want to do. When you don't know the God that you are serving, when you don't know what you believe, you are going to drift about in this particular life. And that is why somebody will come from somewhere and say, why do you want to talk to God? This is the only way God hears and answers prayer. Lift up your right leg and jump up like this. And that way you do it 20 times, God will hear your prayer. And you will do it. Because you don't know what you believe. But when you know what you believe, you can be able to counter the lies of the enemy. Number two, why are we doing this? We are doing this because when you know why you believe, it determines how well you walk with the almighty God. You know, kids always like to ask a lot of questions. And one of their favorite questions is what? Why? Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do this? It's not because they want to stress you out or they want to piss you off. Some of them want to do it because they just feel like asking questions. But the idea is that they want to know the reason. They want to know the purpose. They want to know the underlying factor why they are doing what they are doing. If you understand the reason why you are serving the God you are serving. If you understand the reason why you are in church. You understand the underlying factor. What it does for you is that it gives you purpose. It determines how well you are going to work with the almighty God. It puts context, it puts meaning into your life when you know why you are serving God. You're not serving God because you are desperate. You're not serving God because you don't have anything better to do. You're not serving God because that is where you have, you know, that is a, you know, that's where you make business connection. You are not serving God because of what you are getting. You are serving God out of love. It's just like when you are in a relationship. When you don't know why you are in the relationship, you will continue to pay a counselor to settle problem for you. When you don't know why you are in a relationship, that is when you begin to turn your wife into a boxing, you know, into a punching bag. You better don't do it in America, you will end up in jail. <laughs> That's a story for another day. The point you are making is that when you don't know the reason for something, you abuse it. Okay? When you don't know the reason for it, you abuse it. And that is why if you don't know the reason why you believe what you believe, you, you will have no anchor and your faith will be easily overturned. 
you don't know the reason. Why am I going to downtown Nice Beach? I don't know. Why should I have to go? Someone said, what are you going to do? I don't know. Well, then, 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 then let's go to Murfreesboro. That's what you turn around. Because you don't know why you are going to where you're going. The same thing if you don't know why you are serving God. If you don't know why you are in church. If you don't know why you are doing what you are doing, it is easy for somebody to overturn your faith. It is easy for them to dissuade you. It is easy for them to get you to do the things that is contrary to the will of God, contrary to what you believe. And number three, why are we talking about this? We're talking about this because knowing what you believe about what you believe determine how far you are going to go with God. If you, did, if you know what you believe about your faith, if you know what you believe about your God, it will determine how far you are going to walk with God. Okay? My brother is sitting down there, by uh, Brother Williams. If I know his character, if I know his attitude, if I know his behavior, there are certain things that he will do that I will say, okay, that is him. And it will enhance our relationship or it will make our relationship, it will, it will kind of build up our relationship. If I don't know certain things about him, he might do something that he doesn't mean anything about and that might be an offense unto me. If somebody says something about him, if I don't know that character about him, I'll say, well, if this man is like this, then I don't want to be with him. But the point you are making is that if I know him, if I know the way he thinks, if I know his attitude, if I know his behavior, I know his disposition. If you say certain things about him, no, 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 that's not my brother. That's not what he does. If somebody lies about him, lies against him, I can easily detect that lie and say, no, this is contrary to the behavior of this guy that I know. The point we are making is that when you know your God and somebody comes and tells you a cock and bull story about God, you will say, no, that is not the God that I'm serving. That is not the God. If you understand this person, if you understand this character, the Bible says that God is a loving God. If you see something that is contrary to love, you know this is not the Almighty God. You know that God is a holy God. If you see somebody who is living a life of filth and they say they are serving God, you know that person is not from the Almighty God. You know what he likes, you know what he does not, what he does not like. When you know the God, when you know, when you don't know what you believe about what you believe, you will be easily deceived. You will be easily deceived. Somebody comes and tells you that a uh, pastor is giving away a million dollars today. You will know that person is lying because I don't have one million. <laughs> and if I have one million, I'm sure I'm not going to give it away like that. You know? What I'm trying to say is that if you know the character of the person you are dealing with, it's easy for you to be able to detect lies and truth about that character. The same thing with God. If you understand the character of God, you understand the nature of God, you understand the personality of the Almighty God, it is very, very easy to tell when you see a true religion and a false one. You can tell a true doctrine and a false doctrine. You can tell a true preacher and a false preacher when you know the character of the Almighty God. The Bible says by their fruits, you will know them. It's not just only for the preacher, it's only for the, also for the Almighty God. The fruit of the Almighty God is well known. His character is well known. So when you know what you believe about what you believe, it makes it easy for you not to be deceived. So this morning I want to ask you, as you're sitting there this morning, what do you believe? As a Christian who has been coming to church, as a Christian who has been given his time, a Christian who has been given his talent, a Christian who has been given his resources to the church, what do you believe? What do you believe? It's not what I'm telling you that we believe. It's a question of what you believe. Because I can tell you from now till tomorrow that this is what the Bible teaches. This is what we believe. If you don't believe it, it doesn't make any difference in your life. It will not bless you in any way. There's a difference between the faith or, you know, is there a difference between the faith that you have and the faith that your neighbor or your co-worker have? Is there a difference between the two? Okay? Your friend that is a, that, that is a Jew, your friend that is a Buddhist, your friend that is a Muslim, your friend that is a Hindu, is there a difference in what you believe and what they believe? Okay? Is there a difference? I'm sure many of us who must have heard this saying that says, oh, we are all serving the same God. It's just the way we serve him that is different. Some of us have heard that particular saying. Okay? One thing I want you to understand is that that saying, it, it, it may appear to be nice, it may appear to be good, but it's factually wrong. Factually wrong because, let me take an example of just one popular example that we all know. Christians, Muslims. 
Assuming we are both serving the same God. How come that God turned to the Christian and say, I have a son. And then turned to the Muslim and say, I don't have a son. Okay? If we are serving the same God, that God must be crazy. If we are serving the same God, that God is a real troublemaker. Okay? If we are serving the same God, that God loves to mess with the mind of people. Because you gather two sets of people and you are telling them two different sets of story. Do you know those kind of people who do that amongst your friends? If you have a friend who told us, say, you know what he said about you? you say, you are not a good person. You say, we should not be careful. She will be careful around you. And then he turns around and says, did you hear what your friend said? He say, you are a terrible person. I don't know. That kind of person, what do you do to that kind of person? You know that kind of person is a troublemaker. Is somebody who just likes to cause discord among people. And the God that we serve is not the God, is not the author of confusion. So if God is not the author of confusion, the only logical explanation is that we are not serving the same God. And if we all are serving the same God, that means that God is doing a very poor job of telling us who he is. Because if he's telling me that I have a son and he's telling somebody else I don't have a son, which one do you want? To, which one does he want me to believe? So that tells us that we are not serving the same God. And this is extremely, that is why it is extremely important that you know what you believe. Very, very important. So that you don't believe that cock and bull story that yes, we are serving the same God when the whole thing, even, even the name tells you they are different. Okay? So as a Christian, I ask you again, what do you believe? What do you believe? Or if we put it another way, what do you think Christians believe? And that is what I'm going to be talking about this particular morning. What we as Christians believe. The Bible describes who a Christian is. And the Bible describes for us and gives us a record of the things that, you know, that Christians believe. It is referred to as the doctrines of the scripture. Those are the things that we believe. Those are the things that we hold there. Now, people might interpret it differently, but those are the consistent beliefs of the, of the Christian, of the, uh, of, of those who call themselves Christian. There are so many of them, but I'm going to focus on about 12 of them this particular morning. And we're going to go very, very quickly. The first one is that every Christian believes. That the Bible is the word of God. If you say you are a Christian, you don't believe that the Bible is the word of God, I don't know what you, I don't know how you can call yourself a Christian. Number two, the Bible, every Christian believe in what is referred to as the Trinity, the Godhead, that is made up of the Son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is what we believe as a Christian. It's not three God, it's one God manifested in three different persons. Every Christian believe in the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ was conceived of, of the Virgin Mary. That it was born by the, by the implantation of the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Christians believe that. Every Christian believes in what is called the total depravity of man. In other man that we are born sinners. Okay? And that the only way that we are made righteous is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we believe. Not only that, we believe in what is called justification, which is the act of God's grace whereby one's forgiveness, one's sins are forgiven. And God now begin to, you know, re, uh, kind of recreate that individual and give them the righteousness of God. We believe that. That no matter how, how sinful we are, when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus washes away our sins and makes us new. And the Bible gives us a particular promise. He said he will separate us from our sins as east is far from the west. Which means there is a justification. Which means God sees us as righteousness in Christ. That is what we believe as believers. Not only that we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says I will give you power. When the Holy Spirit falls upon you, and then you will become my witnesses. In other words, there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit that comes upon those who have given themselves unto the Almighty God. That is what we believe. We believe in the healing and the deliverance. The Bible makes us to understand that the redemption and deliverance from the cause of the law, healing of sicknesses and diseases are all accounted for by the, by the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for this cause the Son of Man was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So that is what we believe as believers. As a Christian, we believe that when we are sick, we can pray for healing. We believe that when we are oppressed, that we can pray for the devil to be casted out or for any, any, any oppression of the enemy to be lifted. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came that he might set free the captives. So that is what we believe. We believe that a day will come when Jesus Christ will call his people home, which is called the rapture of the saints. 
The Bible said that the trumpet will sound. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who are still alive, when we hear that sound, we will go up with him. That is what we believe. That the day is coming that the Lord Almighty will make a separation. We believe in what is called the resurrection. That those who die in Christ are not dead forever. That they are going to hear the voice of the Almighty God and they are going to rise up again. We believe in the resurrection. And that is what the song that we played earlier on says that we believe in the resurrection. Every individual who has ever lived will be resurrected. Some to honor, some to glory, and some to everlasting shame and contempt. That is what the Bible teaches us. That is what we believe as believers. Not only that, we believe that Jesus Christ is coming again. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, it said this same Jesus, when the angels were talking to the, uh, uh, to the disciples, he said this same Jesus, as he has gone up, he said the same way he's going to come down. So he's coming back again. Jesus Christ is coming back again. That's what we believe. We believe in the final judgment. We do not believe that when people die, they become extinct. We believe that the time will come when everybody will stand at the grand, at the great white throne judgment of the Almighty God and everybody will receive the reward of their action. The Bible says some will, some will receive unto honor, some will be unto dishonor. And then we believe also in hell. The Bible tells us that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But for those who decide not to follow the Almighty God, who decide to side with Him, they will end up in there. The Bible makes us to understand that hell is real. Jesus Christ preached more about this particular place called hell. He gave us an example that there was a Lazarus and there's a rich man. And that, that rich man died, went to hell, and in that particular hell was calling for hell. So that tells us that hell is a real place, and we believe it. Now the issue is this. I'm just doing a very, very quick overview. If you were to sit down with this, it would take you a year to study each of this one to be able to get the details. But it just gives you an overview. But the reason why I outline this particular 12 is this. The reason is this. As believers, we should be grounded in the truth of the word of God. The reason why we should know this particular truth is number one, it confirms your faith. Believing the teachings ground your faith. It makes you to be able to know exactly what you are committing yourself to. The God that you are serving. What he has promised and what he's going to do for you. Number two, it confronts the cynics. When the cynics are telling you all sorts of things, when you know what you believe, you know how to respond to them. And then finally, you are able to counter the lies of the enemy. But the question this morning is that you, know, when you know the teaching, do you believe the teachings? Do you believe that the Bible is the word of God? Do you believe that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you believe that Jesus Christ was born and you're born of a Virgin Mary? Do you believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Do you believe in the healing and the deliverance? Do you believe in the rapture? Do you believe in the second coming? Do you believe in the judgment? Do you believe in the, in the final judgment? In, 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 the, in the literal hell that the Lord Almighty will put those who have refused to accept the saving grace? Do you believe all those things? Because it is not enough for me to tell you. It is not for us, it's not enough for me to show you some of this thing. But what is most important is for you to be able to resolve this thing. Because until the word meets with faith in your heart and you believe it, it will not do you any good. But that will not be our portion this morning in Jesus' name. So the question is, do you believe what the Bible teaches about your faith? Do you actually believe that the word of God is true and that particular word of God will come to pass? Do you believe it? That is the real question. 